Hello there, friends. Jurlita Travel welcomes you again on our virtual tours. And today we visit Plunge. Plunge is one of the Lithuanian towns, one of the Jewish shtetls of Lithuania. It's located on the river Babrungas. Babrungas river starts on Platale Lake. We are going to show you Platale Lake as well, but a little bit later. So here in this place, Oginsky noble family built a first power station. Later on, it was leased to a local Jew, Zak, Mendel Zak, who developed the businesses between the two world wars of the 20th century. Now I am standing on a little balcony overlooking the waterfall of Plunge. Lithuania is a very flat country. We don't have impressive big waterfalls. So local people are always happy to see when there is a little change in the elevation. Central street of Plunge. The typical center of the town, two floor wooden houses and some brick houses, some renewed, some are still very old. So the, here is a little valley uh, of, of, of the place. And here was the very center. Now, uh, Plunge is about uh, 500 years old. And the Jewish community in Plunge uh, was uh, about uh, um, 400 years old, uh, uh, not to give you too many exact numbers. But in the 18th century, they were half of the population. And in the 19th century, they were even more than half of, of, of the population of the town. So automatically, they, as, as in many other places where they were involved in commerce, uh, having shops, uh, workshops, uh, uh, doing crafts, uh, doing free professions. There were doctors, there were lawyers uh, in the 20th century, politicians, uh, they were elected uh, to the um, uh, town authorities. Uh, so from the main street, we enter into a, form, in, into a former entrance into the courtyard of the synagogues. And here we can see a sign with an inscription in English and in Lithuanian language telling a little bit of uh, history of uh, Jews of Plunge and showing two synagogues. The Great Synagogue yeah, and the way the Great Synagogue looked uh, in, um, in recent years. So um, the Great Synagogue was one of the six synagogues of uh, Plunge. It was built in the 19th century. Next to it was another synagogue, then was a small wooden prayer house, a cloise, and uh, f uh, three more cloises in other parts of uh, Plunge. Now, as you know, <coughs> Holocaust wiped out the Jewish population of Lithuania. Um, and um, after the war, there were very few Jews uh, still living here. And the synagogues, as big, as relatively big, um, buildings, they were used by the authorities for different purposes, including culture um, centers, uh, sport halls, gyms, uh, warehouses, shops. So the synagogue which was here was a gym belonging to a local school um, and uh, other houses were used for different purposes. Now, the last Jew of Plunge decided uh, not to continue the, the desecrated way of using the synagogue. And he realized that one day uh, the city will take over these buildings. And uh, he signed an agreement and got money which he used for cultural purposes, for maintaining and, and restoring the Jewish heritage. So, and the city turned down this building. So today we have here an empty spot. From the main street, we turn into the market square. And this is the only small piece of the street which is still paved with cobblestones. Once the whole square was uh, paved with cobblestones, like in the old days. And today, after many, many changes, after many fires in the old days, after wars of the 20th century, uh, the square is new and uh, it's paved with new uh, concrete blocks and there is a bench with a guitar uh, 
outlining the names of people there on the small plug, the names of local artists, local musicians who perform during uh, local holidays. So it's an atmosphere of the small town with a small fountain here and the crossroad, the main crossroad, this street leads to the church and to drive uh, west towards the sea and we are on the main square, uh, or former market square, which today is a small pedestrian area. So it's, it became very popular uh, in uh, towns to close part of, of the street and to turn it into the pedestrian area. Also a new initiative which tells you in uh, Lithuanian and in English a little bit of the local history and gives us few pictures. Here you can see the old market and this is the picture of, of the square uh, and has the story uh, in Lithuanian and uh, in English. Now, if we read the history of Plunge, actually we read the history of uh, uh, fires. Plunge was wooden and was burned down many times and many times restored and that's why we have a lot of new solid built buildings today. At the end of the 19th century was one big fire in Plunge and uh, a lot of people lost uh, their houses and uh, of course among them a lot of Jews lost their houses and a lot of them were poor poor people and the uh, Count Oginski was uh, very generous he decided to give uh, loans to the Jews and uh, especially to the poor Jews for two years so they could reconstruct uh, their houses uh, and stay in uh, Plunge and uh, continue being uh, part uh, of the uh, community. The, between two world wars period, 20 years from 1920 till 1940, there were quite good relations between um, the Jews and the local people and the, the percentage of Jews in Plunge was still very high and uh, uh, even a mayor of uh, Plunge was a Jew, uh, his name was Goldwasser and he was elected and he stayed for many years, for about 10 years, he was the mayor of the town of uh, Plunge and also many Jews were in the uh, town hall. We speak about paradoxes, we, when we travel in Lithuania on the background we always have Holocaust, but at the same time it's very important to keep the memory of the good things which uh, were between the Jewish and, uh, and the non-Jewish communities. Really, there were a lot of good uh, things and, and relations. This is a statue of Yaakov Bunka, who was a last Jew of uh, Plunge. Actually, he, has, he had family and uh, hopefully we'll meet his son today and we'll ask more questions about uh, Bunka in our interview with Eugenius Bunka. So this statue was erected here as Bunka was a famous citizen of the town and he did a lot to maintain the Jewish heritage of Plunge. I'm not sure if we can use this word former. If it's a cemetery, it's a cemetery, but it's a desecrated cemetery the school was built on top of the graves. Yaakov Bunka, whose statue we have just seen, uh, put a lot of efforts to um, restore this cemetery. When we say restore, we, don't, we, we can't expect that it would be restored in its authentic way. But for a long time, Soviet authorities wouldn't allow local Jews to commemorate uh, important places, uh, and, uh, and sites of the Holocaust and cemeteries. Uh, Yaakov Bunka was fighting with the local authorities and finally in the 80s when uh, the situation in the Soviet Union uh, started changing, uh, he got permission to restore uh, and to make this memorial. So he found 
headstones in different places, actually not only here, and he arranged them in semicircles. So we see a nice big a Jewish headstones with clear inscriptions, with stars of David, with the Pei Nun, with Tan Seba, and so on and so forth. Now, this stone says in Yiddish and in Lithuanian language, Sanosos Jidu Kapines, the old Jewish cemetery. So, every place connected to the Jewish history has to be marked today in Lithuania, and such stones were erected. So, it's a, it's a sign which says that here was a cemetery. We're entering the Holocaust site of Jews of Plunge and surrounding villages. So uh, the wooden carvings were done by Yaakov Bunka, whom we have already mentioned a few times. He struggled with the authorities of the city to get permission to commemorate the Holocaust, to commemorate his family, his friends who were killed in Plunge by local uh, killers and uh, Nazi uh, conquerors. Uh, in this forest, Kaushenai forest, on a hill was a massacre uh, of Plunge Jews and Jews from uh, other places. Altogether, over 2,000 Jews were killed in this forest. And this memorial consists of uh, several parts. Here is a small alley in honor of righteous Gentile. And we see here little poles with names of Lithuanians who saved uh, the Jews uh, during the Holocaust in the area of Plunge. Altogether in Lithuania there are over 900 righteous Gentile who got the certificate from Yad Vashem Center in Jerusalem and about 300 people who got uh, the certificate from the Lithuanian government who couldn't get uh, Yad Vashem uh, certificate because they didn't meet the criteria. Here you can see a statue, a wooden carving of a man uh, with his uh, hands chained like that. Bunka called this statue anger. This is a statue of a Lithuanian man who tried to help the Jews, righteous Gentile Ali, and he was caught by the Nazis and brought here and killed as well. So we go up the hill towards the mass graves and we see here one more wooden carving of a family carved into an oak tree. Bunka used to say that it's impossible to destroy all the trees on earth, as well as it is impossible to kill all the people. He carved the family into the tree to show the eternity of, uh, of our lives. Another episode of our tour is uh, especially touching, I would say. Uh, and uh, there are not too many such evidences in other places of Lithuania and I'm sure that uh, such uh, tragedies did happen in many many places. Here is a mass grave of 70 girls, 70 students who were led to death to, to, to the pits and the priest saw them on the way and he tried to save them. So the killers made a performance out of that. They called him to baptize the girls and promised him that um, they will not uh, kill them. The priest baptized the girls the same moment and uh, the killers, despite their promise, they took them to the forest and killed. The priest knew about that uh, and actually we don't know much about uh, his uh, uh, fate and life. And here is a memorial with the names of girls on, uh, on the plaques. And Yaakov Bunka, knowing all that story, he made a carving of a girl. We are on a train station in Plunge. And here is a black column with the text in uh, Samogitian dialect of Lithuanian language, printing honoring the fact that uh, the deputy mayor uh, Hirsch Mintz initiated 
and succeeded to persuade the president of Lithuania in the 1930s to pave the uh, railway tracks from uh, Klaipeda, from Memel, to Kaunas uh, and to include Plunge into the commercial life of Lithuania. The Oginsky family were nobles, rich people, landlords, uh, musicians, later on scientists, businessmen, industrialists. They were the elite of the Lithuanian society. Today in their estate there is an art museum Plunge, a town in the northern part of Lithuania, in Zemaitia. People here speak different dialect. People here less talk but do more, as we could find out in our interview with Eugeni Bunka and his outstanding father, uh, Jakov Bunka. Thank you for being with us on this episode about Lithuania. I hope you enjoyed it. I would highly appreciate your remarks or likes on our channel. And you are welcome to join us in other episodes.